Hi traders and welcome to the Technical Analysis Market Watch on Friday the 28th of June. So I've seen a bit of action this week uh, with levels that we've been talking about over the last few weeks hit and rejecting back to where they started. So we'll jump straight into the charts and see if we can identify any trades for today or early into next week. All right, we'll start out here with the Aussie USD and we can see that not much has really changed in terms of where it was actually, um, yeah, what it was doing over the last few weeks actually. The 20 moving average has certainly caught it up this week. It's held it between uh, it and the resistance above at the 6680 mark. Um, and effectively every week or every day of this week has touched this level or gone close to touching that level and reversed. So looking uh, yeah, very, very uh, dodgy, if you like, on uh, the attempt up because every time it gets up there, uh, it sells off relatively quickly. So what we're looking for here is effectively if we're trading the, uh, this level, all we're doing is looking for a break of the 20 moving average, which will see us um, you know, start to aim for that 66 cent mark pretty flat or we get a break above the 66.80, uh, and then we start to look for those uh, bigger moves up to, well, effectively 67.80 and then 68.80. The big 80s uh, are playing the game here. But you can see the market's been absolutely trapped for the last week and a half inside the trending moving average and the overhead resistance. So for scalping opportunities, you just look for trades in between the trending moving average uh, and the 66.80. Uh, and a, a daily break out, outside of those zones, either lower or higher, will see us move to the next 80 points that uh, we've been talking about. So pretty good trading if you're trading that zone uh, from a scalping standpoint, but uh, a little bit boring if you're looking for a, a big move. So really the scalpers would have had a field day um, and swing traders might have been not so happy about the Aussie this week. We'll move over to the US dollar CAD and the US dollar CAD has had a bit of a rebound. We saw a sell off earlier in the week uh, to effectively the 136.20. You know, we always talk about the 20 and the 80s as key levels for currencies. And um, obviously it hit that 136.20 uh, and then bounced off that quite aggressively all the way up to the resistance at 137. No real surprises there. 20 moving average was also in front of it. So it's got a bit of a roadblock in front of it now. There's no question about that. We can see that the 20 moving average is uh, effectively at the same level as the resistance. So pretty easy trading in terms of where we need to go. If we get a daily close above 137, uh, either today or at the end of next week, uh, in the start of the week, actually on Monday, uh, we'll be looking for moves up to the 137.50 to 137.80. Uh, they're the two levels we'll be aiming for. But if we get uh, a bit of a roll reversal from here and the price action starts to trade underneath this uh, low point at 136.80, then we start to target that 136.20 again. So that 50 pip move that we're looking for there uh, and then further on to the real support at 136. So pretty straightforward, similar to the Aussie in a sense that it's only have, it only has to do something small to actually get us trading in a, a particular direction. But at the moment, it's right in the middle zone. So really either way, I'd be happy with because it's going sideways anyway. Uh, whichever way it chooses to swing, I'm happy enough to trade. It's just uh, aiming for those targets that we just talked about will be pretty uh, optimal trading, I, I think, when we get that daily close in either direction on the CAD. Over to the US dollar yen, the star of the show this week uh, continued on its merry dance once it broke through that resistance uh, that we have been talking about for a few weeks. It obviously kept going. It hit the target that we had it set for though at 160. So if you're still in it, um, yeah, I guess it's a, a bit of a wait and see as to whether it's going to pull back or continue on long. But in my mind, the trade's already done. We've already seen the good trade in it. I know quite a few, a few of you have taken advantage of that move, which is great. Um, and the target was, like I said, the target's already been hit. So what we'd be waiting for now is a bit of a reversal back to this level, a rollover. And then if we see a series of higher highs and higher lows on a smaller time frame, then we'd look at taking long opportunities uh, from there and just project, project the next target. Basically, it's moving in waves, as you can see. Each wave is equal to the other. And we wouldn't expect that that would be much different. So we just project that wave out. But of course, if it rolls over here and starts to pull back a little bit, the 20 moving average is the first point of call around that one. At the moment, it's at 158, sort of 40, but you know, we'd expect it's going to move up a little bit higher. So probably 158.50 would be there by the time it pulls back. 
uh, but failing that, the very strong support now is at 157.80. And if it gets there, that could still be a, a reasonable trade because it's obviously a role reversal zone, zone then. And we're able to take advantages of any long move if we get that swing in the right direction. So really good trading on the yen. Hopefully you're able to take advantage of that move. All right, over to the dollar index now. Uh, again, a really strong week, actually. Like we had a bit of a weakness uh, throughout this last session, but you can see we've pulled up uh, quite significantly. Still open at the moment, but it's getting very, very close to the 106 again, um, which obviously affects the euro more than anything else. What we've got here, though, is another rejection on the way down. Every time it has looked like weakening, the, the bulls have come in and really stolen the show. And when we see this sort of action, uh, you know that the bulls are, are still relatively uh, strong and in control. So really, we are approaching resistance on it, though. We know that there's very strong resistance at that, that 106.50 area, which is the previous highs here. So something to be mindful of. But there is still another 50 points, which is obviously going to spell a little bit more pain for the euro if it, if it gets there. But really not looking for any shorts here at the moment. Uh, it's looking a little bit too strong. And we're going to let the market play out. Over to the euro, though, uh, the one you'd be trading. And look, underneath the uh, support level at 107, still trading there. Tried to break through today. Obviously, what the dollar index did, this has done the inverse of, uh, and then pulled back down underneath the 107. It wouldn't want to be falling under, yeah, 106.80 in my mind uh, with a daily close. If it does that, um, we're probably going to be in a little bit of trouble for the euro. And obviously, the, the obvious target is the 106. Um, you can see here, this is the previous uh, low. That will be the target if we get a break below this uh, 106.80 uh, on a daily. So we need a daily close below there. Um, and then we can look to take opportunities on the short side. If uh, we start to see strength and it gets back above the 107 and we start to see a series of higher highs and higher lows on a smaller time frame, um, the straight out move that you'd be going for is the 107.50, which is around the trending moving average where it currently sits, but also at around a pretty strong roll reversal zone where we've seen a lot of price action uh, in terms of support and resistance. So pretty easy trading, really. Uh, if you're going to scalp it, scalp between those two zones and go for small pips, um, really, with yeah, pretty tight stop losses but if you are looking for the bigger move wait for a daily close either below 106.80 or uh, the uh, above the 107 and we aim for the 20 moving average or the previous low here at 106 so pretty straightforward on the euro and finally on the s p 500 look a very flat week really uh not much to report here after hitting an all-time high last week uh we can see that we've mellowed out a little bit so a little bit of weakness at the start of the week and basically all we've done is float sideways not really much to do here uh, other than you know if you want to scalp it uh, in intra session basically just set your target here around the 5400 and the high at 5520 uh, and scalp in between those two zones a daily break above the 5520 uh, then we'd be looking at long opportunities but i would wait i wouldn't be the first person to that party i'd rather wait for it to retest it from above um, and of course a break below the 5450 if you like uh, and the 20 moving average would be the first target which is only 30 points away from th that level uh, and then the real zone uh, that we're looking for here is the 5330 so if we start to get a bit of a move along and it breaks the 20 moving average I'd be looking at aiming down to that 5340 uh, area as the target and then we can reassess it because that's a role reversal zone very similar to what happened here as you can see broke through came back and tested it uh, and then it went up and made its move. We're looking for something similar for continued strength in this one. We really want something similar to play out so we can see that um, that momentum shift again at a level of serious um, support. But it's been a very flat week, really. So it would have been hard to get any opportunities uh, in this one. So I hope everyone's had a great week's trading. I know we've seen some pretty good moves and um, hopefully you're able to take advantage of some of those. Have a fantastic weekend and I look forward to seeing you all next week.